Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome back to another video. Today we've got another breakdown slash analysis, whatever you want to call it really. Um, the last one went really, really well. I feel like a lot of you enjoyed it and a lot of you joined my, enjoyed my insight as to what happens in these high elo, high tense situations in these games. So today we've got me and Excoundrel playing what I believe is one of the strongest bot lane duos at the moment, which is Jinx and Lulu. Um, straight off the back here, you can see that we're against a Kaiser Alistar matchup. So we can be a bit aggressive in the early stages at level 1, and sometimes at level 2 as well, depending on how the trades go. Uh, in terms of the rest of the map as well, we're against a Twisted Fate, uh, so we have to be a bit careful with his ulti. We have to play a bit passive when he reaches level 5. Uh, we got an Olaf and a Kali going to be trying to jump on us throughout the whole game. So we'll have to be a bit careful and sit back a little bit. In terms of our team, we have a really good team fight comp. We have the Kennen in there, which is, again, still the most broken champion in the game right now. Lee Sin, which is a really good early game jungle. And big, fat Gragas in there as well. So, yeah, in terms of team comps, both teams are, are pretty decent, to be fair. I would say we have probably the better team fight comp. Uh, but they can definitely win team fights as well. Um, let's get this video running. And um, yeah, if you enjoy this sort of content, if you're new around here, make sure you, you guys do subscribe and you do like the video as well. And I'll definitely be doing more of these. Turn the volume up a little bit for you guys. So you can hear a little bit. Um, but yeah, early laning phases we're looking at, as I said, trying to poke down at level one. Um, I outrange the Kaiser with my rockets and Excoundrel can normally heal me or use his Q to poke down the enemies as well early on. So it's quite important during a Jinx Lulu game or Jinx Lulu lane I should say. But sometimes it can get a little bit difficult in lane. Sometimes you have to sit back, you have to relax. Um, you can't really go that aggressive sometimes. We do get an early ward there on the blue. It's actually super, super important to try and get some early vision down to see where the jungler has started. Um, we realized that the jungler's now started topside. So what junglers normally do is they do like a full clear of the top side, and then do a full, full clear of the bot side, then gank down bottom. Sometimes they do other things as well. Sometimes they do like half clear top side, like two camps, and then do two camps bot side into scuttle crab. So, yeah, we have to be a little bit careful when the jungler comes down. But here we're just farming up. Trying to get a little bit of poke down. The Alistar tries to engage, but Excalibur is completely fine. Again, I'm trading against the Kaiser with my range. They try and go on to Lulu there, and I exchange by hit, getting shots on the Kaiser. You can see that Kaiser is quite low on HP already now. Really important if they engage on your support that you're always attacking the, um, the AD carry because... They will, they'll get a bit of damage on your support, which is completely fine. I mean, she has the, sh uh, Lulu has the shields, but for us, we got the most, we got more damage down. And Alistar just, yeah, Alistar tried to catch out the, um, the Lulu there, which is a little bit unfortunate. And I kind of run it down here as well. So yeah, pretty interesting exchange there. Um, I kind of messed up a little bit there, to be fair. I mean. The Alistar was really, really low on HP here. I don't know why he would never run in here against a Lulu, especially with shield up. But you can see how I'm always using my rockets and using it against the Kaiser. It's really important in lane that Kaiser, um, Kaiser has less of a range than Jinx with her rockets. Obviously, you use the mana, um, which is not really that big of a deal in the early laning phase. You mainly want to use your mana to try and poke down the enemy champion instead of using your rockets towards the minions. You want to save that for your, um, for your Gatling gun. What happens here is that um, Excalibur gets ex um, engaged here. No idea why the Alistar's uh, pushing up this far. Gets polymorphed, which is really, really strong ability against Alistar as a Lulu. Because that means Alistar can't really do anything. So Alistar can use his first or his second ability or do anything. So we're just poking him down here. I use my traps, trap him up, and then I kill him really, really easily. So what I did here was completely fine me chasing up here. I kind of went a little bit too far. I could have barriered maybe to save myself. I went a little bit too far here under tower. And I just got hit there. Just got into tower range there. And obviously he got the heal from his um, from his little sweet tooth thing there. Which is really, really unlucky. I kind of misplayed that. But yeah. I mean, we, but me, I misplayed that completely. I could have barriered. I could have, you know, flashed away or anything like that. But 
a bit of a misplay, but a one for one exchange is not that bad. With um with Jinx Lulu, the main thing you want to prioritize is scaling. You want to scale up. You have a much better late game um than the Kaiser. So you want to make sure you scale up and you basically farm up to make sure that you do a big amount of damage later on in the game. So Scoundrel needs to back here, so I need to play a little bit passive to make sure I don't get exchanged. Or does he not back? Or maybe he doesn't back. I think he's waiting for his locket. Getting locket as the uh, first backer to support is really, really important. Nearly catches out Kaiser there. We see that Kaiser has gone back. So we're pushing out the lane here. Seeing if we can deny Kaiser some minions. Then I don't really I don't think I go back here. Yeah, I make sure the Alistar doesn't freeze a lane. Sometimes the supports like to tank the wave to try and freeze it. So what you need to do is you need to walk up and just make sure that you you know, you make sure that they can't do anything there. I get cancelled there. I tell I tell the team to focus the objectives because we have a Ken in this game. So Kenan can roam down for Dragon, which is up very, very soon. I tried to go back to try and get the um the crit glove, but Obviously, I was too busy typing instead of concentrating on the map. Yeah, they're trying to invade here. They're trying to catch out Excoundrel. Kaiser flashes. Kaiser ulties in. Alistar flashes in, but we do really, really well to actually deny them there with the traps. And Excoundrel polymorphs the Kaiser, which is really well played by us. They, I think they tried to get a bit of vision in our jungle because the dragon's up in 20 seconds. Lee Sin's still sitting topside, but I think they get first tower of the game here. Oh no, they don't. They just push down the tower. So they've got a few plates top lane, which is completely fine to be fair. The dragon stop in 10 seconds. It gives Lee Sin time to come back and actually get two dragon if he comes in time. But early lane faces, again, there's not really much going on except for that one exchange that happened. Where we kind of misplayed a little bit, but again, we're just farming up here. We're you know, with Jinx, you can just farm up. You do really, really well with farming up. And then later on, you get a big mass exchange off. TF comes in and ulties us here. But I think we survive completely fine. Yep. Lee Sin comes in for a gank. Doesn't really do much. But that's fine. Lee Sin's just there for the cover. We could have got exchanged on there by the Twisted Fate. But it was completely fine. Huz is just below 1 HP there as well. So again, we're focusing on, on objectives here. There's going to be a big massive team fight here around the objectives. Again, Alistar gets Polymorph. Somehow, Kaiser still has ultimate backup. But Xandra does really, really well there to peel away from the um, from the Kaiser there. Does really well to Polymorph the Kaiser there as well. So Kaiser can't really do much. You have to be very careful when you use your ultimate as Kaiser. And obviously, you get a free Drake here as well. Because sometimes when you ulti in as Kaiser, it's kind of scary because you don't really know the vision. And you don't really know where anyone else is on the map there. Yeah, we can we can go back here and we can quickly analyze that exchange. I mean, we know that they're around here anyway because they just cleared bot lane. We're moving up here to try and get vision on the dragon. We see them here. Excoundrel gets a little bit caught, but he still has ultimate. He still has heal. He still has shield, so it's not too bad. Gets a poly oh, he gets a polymorph on Alistar, sorry. Gets a polymorph on Alistar, which I think denies him the head bar. I think Excoundrel actually times this polymorph to perfection. He headbutts, but he can't pulverize, I don't think. Yeah, he actually times a polymorph so really, really perfect here on Alistar, which actually saves him and knocks him away. So Excoundrel times... You could do this really, really well as Lulu. If you time the polymorph correctly, when Alistar comes to headbutt, uh, headbutt you, he can't use his first ability because he's polymorphed, which actually probably saves his life here. If he gets headbutt and pulverized here, he probably dies, but he times it perfect with the polymorph. You can see... As soon as he gets headbutt, he uses a polymorph. So then Alistar can't use his first ability, which the Gound will probably dies here if he uses his first ability, which actually puts him in a safer spot at the back. Forces Kaisa to use her ultimate to get into distance and then shields herself with Locket and ulties herself as well. So it's actually really, really well played by Scoundrel there. Really shows how Lulu can... Be really, really strong against the Alistar. Completely denies the engage opportunity by Alistar. Actually saves his life there. Uses the locket. Uses the um, ultimate as well. And we get a free Drake from that as well. So it's actually really, really play, a really, really good play there by Excoundrel. I thought it actually polymorphed the Kaiser there to stop the exchange. But 
actually polymorphs the Alistar perfect there, which is really, really good. I have to try and kind of try and remember what happens in these games because obviously it's a bit of a what I think I recorded this gameplay a couple of days ago. At this point, I was I think I was Diamond Three at this point. So yeah, um, Jinx obviously first item. Obviously, I did a Jinx guide uh, recently. If you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a video a link down in the description. I did the Kaiser guides. Um, so we go for the Infinity Edge first. We're going for the Vamp Boots as well into Locket. There's not really a lot of CC this game. There is a TF card, uh, TF Gold card, but that's about it. But I think I should be completely fine. I think I go Locket here, which is um, a good option. If you're against a load of CC, like a Kennen um, and a Twisted Fate and all these crowd control um, champions, you want to go for the, um, the Quicksilver. As the boots upgrade, because it's really important to to not get crowd control, to not get stunned or rooted against the um, against the Ken and everything like that as well. Alistar gets a really good exchange here on the Lulu, but Lee Sin's there to follow up. We get a nice little juicy double kill there. Really, really good by Lee Sin there, and really good by Scoundrel there as well. Actually baiting them into exchange, which is really, really good. You can see here that Lee Sin is just um, behind us. I think me and Excoundrel both called it. That we can step forward here and kind of bait the engage. Which Excoundrel does really well here. He steps forward a little bit. Forces the Alistar to kind of engage. Like we're auto attacking him at the moment. It's like come on engage us. Like we're an easy target to engage. Excoundrel walks up here. Tries to get a cube poke off. Alistar gets a good engage to be fair. I mean 2v2 it could have been close. But Lee Sin's here. Gets a really good kick onto Kaiser, stunning him up against the wall. We get the kill onto Alistar, and we get the kill onto Kaiser there as well. So, really, really good play there by the Lee Sin, and obviously good play by Excoundrel as well, kind of baiting in the um, the exchange. You can see how against Alistar, it can be really, really hard against Lulu. When you exchange, you get Polymorph. You still got the Lulu Shield to deal with. You still got the Lulu Ultimate to deal with, and the Locket Shield in there as well. So, there's a lot to deal with as a... Um, as a um, as an Adastar, sorry, against the Lulu. So I think I buy both my components here for Runa's Hurricane instead of getting the boots upgrade. Yeah, I did. So I uh, Infinity Edge and Runa's Hurricane are two really really cool items on Jinx. Being able to get the spread from the Runa's Hurricane to go well with the rockets. Adastar kind of messes up his combo here. I throw my traps down just in case there's a flash. Yeah, we got the bot tower here, so you can see. After we get the bot tower, we rotate. We try and get, get use our pressure elsewhere on the map. Gragas does really, really well here to go uh, down to the bot lane. This is really, really important. When you take down your tower bot lane, you don't really want to go down bot lane anymore. You want to rotate your advantage. You have an advantage against their bot lane. They can't really do anything. You want to rotate. You want to try and get towers elsewhere on the map. That's why you see us mid lane at the moment. We can rotate up to Herald. We can rotate to Drake, which is probably coming up soon. So being able to rotate from bot lane once you get your tower to the mid lane is really, really important. And obviously this allows us to clear the waves really, really easily mid lane. So we're able to rotate and get vision on the map and also try and get an advantage elsewhere. Yeah, not really much going on. I think we go for Herald here. Yeah, we go for Herald here. We have the numbers advantage. We're really, really strong. Kennen has the ultimate as well. Kragos is AFK. Oh no, he's not AFK. I think he was buying an item, but I think we get this pretty easily here. Yeah. Again, using our advantage to rotate to take objectives. I think we try and get yeah, we try and get the TF here. And at least it does really well here to use Herald straight away during mid lane. We can use our advantage. Poke down the mid lane. You can see how I'm using my rockets here to attack the tower. It's really, really good to use rockets here attacking a tower. So I don't get into close range in, you know, in terms of attacking the, tw uh, getting attacked by the Twisted Fate or the Olaf. I switch to my rockets. Obviously, it uses mana, but I stay out of range to make sure that I don't get attacked by the enemies. And obviously, I get a quite a lot of poke damage here on the tower. And I think we actually get this tower here as well. Yeah, which is really, really good. Jungler does really, really well here. When you get the Herald, you want to use the Herald kind of as soon as possible or when you have an advantage to be able to push down the towers and get them um, get them objectives. Obviously, I tell Kenna to play a little bit safe. I think she's struggling a little bit against the Kali, which is kind of expected. 
Jinx is, I mean, Kenna struggles quite a bit in against the Akali, especially when Akali reaches level 5. Really, really difficult for Kenna to actually farm up because Akali can just jump in, do a lot, do lots of damage to you, and it can be a bit difficult. Do we lose um, top lane tower for it, for Kenna dying? Which is not obviously a bad thing, it's not that bad. Go for the dragon here again. Kennen should really roam down here for the dragon. I think we're completely fine here though. I think we still take this. I can't actually remember. Now this part of the game I remember I remember really, really well. Watch what I do here as Jinx, like with my rockets, and watch what Excoundwood does here. We play this actually really, really well. I stand at the front line here and I use my rockets rockets as like and it, a poke tool, basically. And Excoundrel standing behind me. Just shielding me. You see how they can't really engage on me here? Excoundrel's just shielding me. I'm walking up. I'm using my rockets really, really well. This is super, super important with Jinx. You want to use your rockets. And there's a little advantage. And you can see here. Olaf. I don't know why Olaf comes in here. But you can see here. We clean up the fight really, really well. So it's being able to use your rockets at the start of the team fight. Being able to poke down the enemies. Because you have such a long range with your rockets. There's nothing that the enemies can do at all against your rockets. I'll show you guys that again. So we, we peel away here from Dragon because we know we're outnumbered at the moment. We don't know where their top laner is. So we peel back away from the Dragon, which is completely fine. We don't need to take it. And Gragas is a bit split from us as well. So we peel back here. I change over to my rockets. And I use my rockets as a poke tool. Alistar can't combo me because my range is longer than the Alistar combo. Olaf can't jump on me because... He can't jump onto three people because Lulu will just ulti me and shield me. And Kaisa obviously can't attack me as well because the range is a lot um, a lot bigger. So using my rockets here as a poke. Making sure I step forward, do a little bit of poke damage. You can see, they, they can't engage onto me. Lulu's shielding me. They're all poking on me. And we get a kill onto Alistar here uh, from that as well. And then we use our passive, our movement speed, to then go onto Jinx, which we get a kill there. Excel does really, really well to ulti the Gragas because Olaf tries to exchange. And we get a really, really good team fight off. So it's about being able to use your rockets to be able to poke down the enemies. And also just make sure you don't get exchanged on as well. Just using it as poke. You don't need to obviously kill enemies. Obviously, we killed enemies in that situation. But being able to use your rockets as a poke to be able to poke them down, get a bit of damage off, and get that HP advantage in lane, really, in the, uh, in the team fights. I mean, here we're in a really, really strong spot now. Um, I think we go for loss. I don't think I buy Locket here. Maybe I do buy Locket. I can't even remember if I buy Locket here. Oh, I do buy Locket, yeah. So I buy Locket this game. Obviously, there's not a lot of crowd control on the enemy team. So Locket is still a really, really good option for the AD carry. Get ourselves red buff here. You get the red buff late game slash mid game as an AD carry. Get a little bit of burn damage off. Because it's not really useful on junglers later on in the game. Because they don't really do much. Really Well, obviously they do quite a bit later on in the game. But you're the main damage dealer later on. So it's quite important that you get the, um, the red buff. You can see I'm doing quite a bit of burn damage. You can see that Alistar just can't do anything. And again, we get a nice... Well, actually no, we didn't get a kill. That was the kill top lane, sorry. <laughs> I thought we got the kill there on to Alistar. But again, as a Jinx, you can stand back. You can use your rockets and... Alistar can't do anything. Nice little kill there. I get onto Alistar with my W. I see that he's back in. And we use that advantage now. We go straight to Baron. We're 4 versus 5 now. I mean, I'm really, really strong at this point. Again, as I said in my guide um, a couple of days ago, it's really important to use your rockets in team fights and use your rockets to try and get a bit of poke down. Because you have that huge range... The enemy teams can't really do much against you. Unless they have like a flash cannon ultimate. Which you have to be careful of. But they didn't have any of that this game. I pretty much had a free reign this game. I couldn't really. They couldn't really do much. Get a nice kill there onto Kaiser. Get a nice flash off here onto Alistar. Actually cancels his whole headbutt pulverize. I think we kill them all here. Yeah. Another great thing I did there. Was actually flashing out of the headbutt pulverize. You can see here, if you time the headbutt pulverize perfect. Sorry, I skipped a little bit too far back there. I can see that Kaisa's getting caught here. So after I take this tower, I walk down. Kaisa's going to get caught by the Lee Sin here. Get a nice juicy kill onto Kaisa. And I keep going here because I know that I'm strong enough. I know that I got the Gragas and Lee Sin behind me. And what Alistar does here is Alistar headbutts me. 
if you flash at the perfect time when Alistar is about to headbutt you, you can actually flash away before the headbutt animation goes off. So you can actually, well, basically deny his combo. He gets stunned actually on my, does he get stunned on my traps there as well? Do I trap there? I can't even remember. I can't remember if I trapped there. I think I played this really well. Oh, it's the traps here. So I stand on top of my... I didn't actually plan standing on top of my traps there, to be fair. <laughs> but I stand on top of my traps. I force the Alistar to come in. And then I flash away from his headbutt, which is a really, really hard, but a really neat thing that you can do against Alistar if you time it perfect. You have to time it, obviously, just in time to make sure that you don't get headbutt. And the animation just doesn't come through. You can see he's just about to headbutt me. But I flash away just in time. Show you one more time here. I flash away just in time. I get that poke damage off on the Alistar. I should, should probably use my minigun here instead of my rockets. Because I can go into close range. Honestly at this point it doesn't really matter. We're really really strong. We get a few kills there. And we can use our Baron now to push out top lane. And to keep our keep our momentum going. You can really see how Jinx can... When he, she gets a few items. When she gets like one or two items. She becomes really, really strong. She does a bunch of critical damage. She has ridiculous range as well. And works really, really well with Lulu. Obviously, Lulu gets the Arden Sensor. The Harmonic Echoes. So it gives him more, more attack speed. Heals me. Shields me. Keeps me alive. Which is really, really awesome. I think we push down mid lane here. We should probably go back here because we have quite a lot of gold. But I think we try and get the tower. I think we get it fine. Oh, actually, no, we don't. Because the Olaf comes. Maybe we still get it? No, we don't. So I need to back here. Obviously, I have a lot of golds. I think I go for the uh, Mortal Reminder here because they have an Olaf. They have an Alistar. I have to break down as well. I have to break through the Alistar here. Get the BF Sword component of the GA. And we're off on our way again. So at this point in the game, we're just waiting for the dragons. Uh, again, we got a couple of towers with the Baron buff. We got a couple of couple of kills. And obviously, we're 7-1 and one at the moment. Really, really strong. Obviously, grab the red buff again. And at this point, we're just waiting for the dragon to spawn. So again, you can see the whole of our you can see the whole of our team is around Baron uh, uh, Dragon, sorry. You can see obviously they're a little bit too far ahead because I'm not that far. Um, I'm quite far behind them. But honestly, at this point, they're probably that far ahead. But we're all posturing around Dragon. We know that Dragon spawns in 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, sorry. Normally what you see is like people are top lane pushing or people around Baron Pit or something like that. You need to make sure that you look at the timers of the Dragons and when the Baron spawns and set up vision around them, them objectives because they're so, so important in Wild Rift. They're not as important in League of Legends. You could probably give up a few Dragons in League of Legends. But normally when you give up Dragons in Wild Rift, you lose such a big advantage. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just super, super important to make sure that you go around the um, the uh, dragons. Obviously, I tell my team to retreat here because obviously I'm not there, but I'm here now, so I should be completely fine. Get a cheeky blue buff here, which is fine. Akali tries to jump in here. doesn't really do much. And at this point, I could just run down their team. Lulu's behind me, shielding me. Obviously, I could have used QSS here. would have been really good. No idea where my rocket goes here, to be fair. And I could just run down the whole team here. I've got Lulu shielding me. I've got Barrier. As you can see, I could just run down the whole team here. I actually don't know where my ultimate goes here, to be fair. I tapped my ultimate, but I think it changes. So I tried to ulti the Alistar. Obviously, QSS would have been really, really good here, to be honest. Um, but I took lock at this game because this was the only crowd control they really had. I have no idea where my rocket goes here. I placed my rocket in that direction, but yeah. And you can see at this point, Lulu's shielding me. I have barrier. I have the hill. I can just tower dive and just get a bunch of kills. I think we peel off here and we take dragon. Or I think we just get the inhib. Oh no, Lee Sin's doing dragon by himself, which is really, really good. We get the tower off of this. Obviously, we're in a... I think we're in a 3v5 situation at the moment. You can see how much damage I do. It's disgusting how much damage I do. I I go, yeah, I go a little bit too far there. I get a little bit overconfident. But um, honestly, at this point, we're that far ahead that it shouldn't matter too much. But a bit of a misplay there. Like I said, I got a little bit overconfident. Lee Sin gets the dragon, though. And uh, we're in a fine spot. At this point, Gragas is super tanky against the Akali as well. Lee Sin kills the TF... Gragas kills the um, Akali, and Kaisa is the only one left alive. So, we're in a fine spot. Yeah. Obviously, I say my bad because I went a little bit too deep there. 
I think at that point I thought I had GA, but I realized I didn't have GA and I was dead. I went a little bit too far there, but you can see what, what uh, Jinx can do in terms of chasing down enemies once you get a kill with her passive, being able to get that movement speed and everything. Uh, so at this point, we're just going to go towards Baron, and I think this is near enough uh, near the end of the game now. We're near the end of the game. We're just going to get Baron here. We're going to play it so slow. We could probably take down towers and everything here. But honestly, it's better to play it safe. Take the objectives. Make sure, obviously, they can't steal them. But at this point, they're so far behind anyway that they can't really do much. We should really go top wave here. A top lane here because we have a huge wave. But I think they try and engage on us. Yeah. They try and engage on us. And you can see how strong we are with the shields. Look how many shields I get. I think Excoundrel actually dies here. Yeah. I think Excoundrel forgot to shield himself. But you can see how many shields and everything. And how little the Akali does to me. It's pretty disgusting. I think Akali actually tries to kill the Lulu instead of me. Which is fine for me because I'm still alive. And it's probably fine for Excoundrel as well. Excoundrel's like, I'm dead. It's fine, but you can kill them all. Which is completely fine for me to be fair. You can see here they try and do a lost lost ditch effort for a um for a fight. Kevin does really really well here with the ultimate zones off the Olaf and the Twisted Fate, so he can't actually get onto me. So it's only really a two v two and Alistar and an Akali coming up here against me and a scoundrel. Lisa tries to help us as well. Obviously we got the locket shield off. We've got the I think Excoundrel ulties himself. Yeah, he ulties himself. But we've got the barrier. We've got the Lulu shield. We got the Lulu speed buff as well. And you can see at this point of the game, I'm basically unkillable. Excoundrel died for it. Rest in peace, Excoundrel, but he died for a good cause. And at this point of the game, we can just end the game and it's GG well played. So you can really see the strengths and the advantages of Lulu uh, Jinx Lane. Um, but like I said, at times, there is... At times, there are problems with the Lynx Jinx Lulu. Uh, you need to be very, very safe in lane sometimes. Because most of the time in a 2v2 situation, you will not win. Except for if Alistar runs it down like he did this game. <laughs> As you can see, it was a Diamond 3 game. Um, I went up to 60 LP, which was actually one game away from being in the top 200. I think the top 200 at this time was 63 LP Diamond 3. So I was pretty much on the brink of uh, top 200, but unfortunately I'm not there yet. Um, I'm struggling. I think I've gone down to Diamond 4 now. I think I am currently. But yeah, a little bit of a struggle. Um... Yeah, a victory nonetheless in this game. MVP as well, which is really, really nice. Obviously, like all our teammates. Uh, but yeah, really, really good game from us. 11 and 2. Um, and I think I change over to the damage graph here. I think you can see that. Yeah, 29,000 damage. Most damage in the whole game. You see how Excalibur doesn't have that much damage, but it's completely fine. That's what Lulu, Lulu's there for. Lulu's there to buff up the AD carry, keep the AD carry alive, and yeah, just... Be a really really strong unit. Yeah, Lulu looks Lulu is really really strong at the moment. Lulu plus Kennen um combo is really really strong, especially in solo queue. Um but anyway, that's the end of the video for today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to see more of this analysis slash breakdown video, uh let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Uh but yeah, until next time, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you all in the next one.